Maybe you have a paper to write for a college English class. Maybe your boss has asked you to draft out a letter for shareholders explaining the company's new direction. Maybe you are outraged about a political controversy and want to express your opinion in the local newspaper. Maybe you have an original way of thinking about a professional question and wish to share your insight with your colleagues in a journal article. Maybe you have been volunteered by a committee to write a blog post for the company website. Maybe you just want to write a letter to a friend you haven't seen in a long time. If you find yourself in any of these situations, congratulations, you have a writing project. Writing projects come in all shapes and sizes, from a few sentences you may need to write to propose a suggestion to your boss, to the epic novel you intend to write about the kingdom of fire-breathing unicorns. Some writing projects come with very rigid prescriptions about how the final product should look and sound, while other writing projects provide more flexibility for the writer. All writing projects, however, involve some element of both poles of this continuum between prescribed parameters and free-floating creativity. A true writing project is defined by the fact that there is an envisioned end product, a finished piece of writing that will result from the writing process, be it a lab report, a business plan, or an experimental poem. Writing for its own sake is a great thing to do. As I will mention later on in this lecture, free writing, writing without any intention to publish or revise what you write, can be a powerful tool for developing self-awareness and generating new ideas. This kind of writing, however, is not the kind of writing that we're talking about when we're talking about a writing project, although a writer may use free writing as a way of thinking through ideas for a writing project. A writing project is always focused on the end product, and the end product, whatever it is, always involves some built-in parameters that regulate the look and sound of the final text. In some cases, these parameters are very explicit. A grant proposal, for instance, will typically ask very specific questions and provide a suggested word count for each answer. At other times, these parameters might be more tacit or consensual. If I'm writing my book about unicorns, the final text will have to conform, at least to some extent, to the expectations that readers associate with the fantasy genre if I want to get the book published and attract a readership. Likewise, even as nebulous a genre as experimental poetry involves inbuilt expectations about what an experimental poem should sound like. For example, it will probably not sound like a grant application or a lab report. Identifying the parameters associated with your end product is a crucial starting point for any writing project. Fortunately, the most conspicuous parameters regarding page length, document formatting, and writing style are often stated explicitly in the most common kinds of writing assignments. At the same time, however, these parameters only take a writer so far. The grant proposal instructions may make it very clear for me that I need to answer a specific question in a specific number of words, but it can't tell me how to answer the question. It may be that I am working with a committee that has sketched out some bullet points that they want me to include in the answer, but even then, I am not entirely relieved of my responsibility, because I still need to invent a solution to the problem of how to translate those bullet points into sentences for the application. Writing any sentence, even a sentence where the content is more or less given, is a creative act. That is the nature of language, and it is the irreducible condition of a true writing project. Entering your name and address on a form is a kind of writing, but filling out such a form is an act of transcription, a transcribing project, rather than a writing project in the sense we are talking about here. A writing project, any situation that requires a person to put words together into an unprecedented original sequence, is an inevitably creative act. Like any creative act, it requires not only the capacity to imagine an original solution to a problem, but also the personal audacity to be responsible for that solution, to stand behind it, and to believe in it. A writer has to be willing to have the courage to say something that has never been said before. The writer of even the most humble sentence is a kind of pioneer, forging new directions in the expansive terrain of what human beings can do with words. This is the anxiety and also the thrill of writing, to be out there alone, perched on a branch of your own words. The best writers are those who can muster up the conviction to claim that space, to feel comfortable breaking with the human crowd enough to say something that's never been said before. Any writing project, therefore, requires a kind of marriage between two facets of human experience that we tend to think of as opposites, the ability to conform to rules and prescriptions on the one side, and on the other, the creative ability to forge new paths. The fact that we tend to think about these two things as opposites says more about our own cultural attitudes than it does about the true nature of creative thought. 
we tend to think of creativity as being uncontained, free-flowing, and generally antisocial. Creativity may take on these characteristics when it is operating along these lines, but creativity is a much more potent and ubiquitous force in our lives than we tend to acknowledge. How you dress in the morning, what you eat, how you communicate with your loved ones, and how you organize your daily routine are all inherently creative expressions. Certainly, these activities are all informed by social codes. How you dress is influenced by the expectations associated with your, your gender, your profession, and your age, as well as by practical considerations. You can only wear clothes that you can afford or that are available to you. But when you choose the white shirt over the blue shirt, shirt you are making a creative choice, even if the creative choice is to decide that it doesn't matter which shirt you wear. The creativity of everyday life operates within the guidelines of social expectations and practical considerations, and the same is true of the creativity of writing. Creativity in writing doesn't come, generally speaking, from resisting conventions or writing without regard for situational parameters. Rather, the situational context becomes the setting in which creativity can express itself, creatively adapting itself to the exigencies of the project at hand. The parameters of a writing project, the page length, the writing genre, the stylistic guidelines, become the first raw materials that a writer uses to begin to dream up a vision of the completed project. Getting started on a writing project, therefore, requires first a clear understanding of the formal and stylistic expectations of the finished product. You can think of these expectations as the canvas that you have to work with. Once you know what kind of canvas you have to work with, you can think about the next question. How will you make it yours? Writing is a very personal form of self-expression. When your name appears as the author of a written document, whether it's a memo, an application letter, or a journal article, that document speaks for you. In some ways, it even is you, speaking on your behalf in your absence. Your reader may never actually meet you, but they will feel that they know you and can make certain judgments about you based on the manner in which you have presented yourself in writing. Because of this intense existential relationship between what you write and who you are, it is always a good idea for writers to write truthfully and to express themselves authentically. When you write about something that you care about, and when you write in a way that expresses the true bent of your own personal investment in that topic, the more likely it is that you will communicate effectively, since the words and sentiments that come naturally to you are the ones that it should be easiest for you to articulate. This does not mean that all writing needs to be confessional, personal, or written in the first person. It simply means that writers should believe in what they write about, and that they feel that their words express their truth. To be sure, writers can use writing to lie, and even to lie to themselves, but the guiding principle for writers should always be to try to use any writing project as an opportunity to write your truth, for both ethical and practical reasons. Ethically, of course, writers should feel comfortable claiming responsibility for their words, expressing themselves in good faith as best they can. From a practical standpoint as well, it is usually the case that the greater the correspondence is between what you're writing and what you believe, the easier it will be to generate words and sentences. For this reason, the first thing to do when you are faced with a writing project is to ask yourself how you can align the requirements of the writing project with your own interests, curiosities, and enthusiasms. For some writing projects, this personal enthusiasm is the starting point. For example, as in the case of the fantasy novel that you want to get started, or the journal article that you intend to write about your unique insight into a specific question. In other cases, the writing assignment might be more prescriptive. You might find that your writing project is a 2,000-word essay on the economy of Peru for a global economics class. You might not have any initial thoughts about why you should care about the Peruvian economy, but if you can find some way of approaching the topic that resonates with you personally, not only will you have an internal motivation to write the essay, but you are also more likely to write something interesting and original. Maybe you really connect with llamas, and you can spin the assignment into an examination of the effect of llamas on the Peruvian economy. Maybe you are interested in issues relating to social justice, and you want to look at the economy of Peru from this perspective. Maybe you're interested in a different country, and you can use the assignment to compare and contrast the economy of that country with Peru's. Finding this kind of link between a writing project and your personal and professional priorities is an important first step in the writing process. To write well, you need to care about what you're writing about, and an important part of a writer's creativity is their ability to shape shift and to adapt themselves to different writing situations, using each one as an opportunity to advance their own intellectual agenda. Sometimes, this personal connection will suggest itself immediately. 
You can sometimes tell on a gut level how you think and feel about a certain writing topic, and an advanced writer develops a talent for listening to these gut level rumblings and following their voices. At other times, this connection may be more obscure and elusive. In either case, a good way to proceed is to begin consulting the writings of other writers who have written about the topic that you are writing about. If you are writing about the Peruvian economy, read other articles about the same topic. If you are writing a fantasy novel, read other fantasy novels. If you are writing a college-level lab report, lab report, read other college-level lab reports. No matter what you may be trying to write, you can rest assured that hundreds of other people have written about the same thing before, and in the age of the internet, much of what they have written is readily accessible. The point of this kind of reading is not so that you can adopt other writers' points of view as your own, although you will certainly be persuaded in different directions by different writers along the way, but to become familiar with the way people talk about your subject, to become immersed in the kinds of professional dialogues and debates that relate to the subject that you are writing about, and of course, to collect specific facts that pertain to the subject. As you become involved in this kind of research, you will inevitably find yourself agreeing with some writers and disagreeing with others, attracted to certain aspects of the subject and bored by others, inspired by certain lines of reasoning and confused by others. An effective research process doesn't just tell you what to think, it takes you on a journey through and in between the perspectives expressed by other writers. Although hundreds of people may have written about a particular topic before, none of them were you. The writing project is your unique opportunity to express the one perspective that has never been expressed about this topic, yours, and to make an original and lasting contribution to what has been thought and said about the topic. In order to do so effectively, however, it is necessary to engage in a research process that familiarizes you with the conversation you are jumping into. Such a research process will likely expose you to hundreds if not thousands of discrete pieces of information, facts, figures, quotations, embedded sources, unanswered questions, unexamined implications, and many other things to keep track of. In addition, all of these different pieces of information will likely suggest a tangled web of interconnections that relate them to one another. A data point from one source might help to clarify an unanswered question from a different source. Two quotations from two different sources might disagree about a fundamental question, etc. The human brain is terrific as a terrific processing machine, but it's not extremely good at storing heavy loads of information. That's where writing plays an important role. As you encounter different sources, it is necessary to keep track of the relevant pieces of information in each source, and also to keep a written record of your own responses to what you are reading. As we will discuss in greater detail next week, these kinds of notes typically serve as the seeds that grow into the sentences and paragraphs of a writing project. At an even more elemental level, however, writing down pieces of information allows you to visualize it all at once in a way that allows the brain to identify connections and patterns of interrelations among the data. In addition to taking research notes, writers can also take advantage of less linear styles of representing information to help them to perceive compelling lines of inquiry and new ways of thinking. The most basic kind of brainstorming diagram is the web model, where the main topic, Peruvian economy for example, sits in the middle and arms branch out to represent the different facets of this topic, political factors, natural resources, climatological concerns, social problems, llamas, etc. These arms can then become the centers of subordinate webs and so on. Sometimes these offshoots will even suggest lateral connections that weave subpoints together into a tangled pattern of talking points that resembles the actual webiform architecture of neuroanatomy. The, may, the point of this kind of brainstorming exercise, however, is not to produce an exhaustive cognitive atlas of a given topic, but to generate a menu of relevant points that, of connection to your topic that allows the brainstormers to identify particular areas of the map that compel their curiosity. If you identify a certain area of your concept map that strikes you as particularly interesting for one reason or another, maybe it's something you haven't seen discussed by other writers, maybe it's something you feel like you have an intuitive understanding of, maybe it's a point of convergence in the map that illustrates a broader point you want to make or that validates a certain opinion you want to express. A helpful next step is to use the power of writing to examine this node in greater detail. Free writing is a form of writing that is not project related, it is pure process. Start off by asking yourself why you care about the topic, what you hope to learn about it, and what you have to say about it. Keep your writing voice informal and conversational, as if you were talking to yourself, which in a way, you are. The difference with writing, however, is that the exigencies of language require not only that you express some general opinion, but that you articulate specific statements, which you can then go on to refine and elaborate into more specific statements. Free writing can be a way of using the power of language to enhance and refine unstructured thinking 
and it can be a powerful strategy for developing the intuitions and flashes of insight that come out of brainstorming sessions into more clarified and focused lines of reasoning. People are frequently surprised by how engaging in uncensored, private free writing can help them stumble into new ways of thinking about their topic that they hadn't previously considered. Free writing can help writers to figure out what they didn't realize they already knew, allowing them to dig up the hidden ideas buried in their own subconscious. As I mentioned before, the conscious brain can only keep track of a few pieces of information at a time. The subconscious mind, however, is much more voracious and absorptive. Below the thin layer of awareness that represents human consciousness lies a vast reservoir of dynamic depths that are ceaselessly swirling about in the dark, but yet which provide the reservoir out of which mysteriously pop our thoughts, our dreams, the words we use, our moods, and of course, our ideas for writing projects. For all of our advancements in neuroscience, the subconscious still remains the dark matter of psychology. We know it's there, even if we don't really have any way of describing what it is or how it works. Advanced writers respect the subconscious, recognizing their indebtedness to it. In some times and cultures, writers have been privileged as the class of individuals who are able to travel into the mysterious realms of the subconscious and to bring back the strange jewels and creatures that live there. We all have this power, however, and writing is a uniquely effective vehicle for penetrating into this wilderness, or perhaps, to switch metaphors, writing is a fishing pole for reeling in the particular deep-sea animals that float through the midnight zone of the human mind. Brainstorming and free writing are both strategies for tapping into the imaginative power of the subconscious, but the subconscious also needs time to rest to work its magic. Respecting the subconscious means allowing it time to think rather than cramming writing projects into the space of time it takes to type out the sentences. The subconscious is much more cooperative when it is well fed with input from the, in the form of research articles you read, when it is prodded and coaxed on a regular basis by brainstorming style exercises, and when it gets a chance to do its deep work while you are sleeping, driving, in the shower, and thinking consciously about other things. This means that the way you schedule your writing activities plays an important role in how effectively you can harness the power of your writerly subconscious. Most writers find that sessions of 90 minutes or two hours spaced out across a few writing sessions a week results in, in an ideal situation where the conscious brain is jogged at regular intervals in a way that allows the subconscious brain to do its own kind of thinking in the interim so that at each writing session, the subconscious has new insights that it is ready to cough up to the attentive writer. In this way, the mysterious activities of the subconscious can be tapped through the very mundane activity of time management. One of the most effective things you can do to signal to both your subconscious and your conscious brain that your writing project is really going to get written is to create a timetable that indicates not only the deadline for the finished product, but also a specific itinerary of writing sessions spread out over the course of the project timeline. Whether you are writing an essay for a class with a specific deadline set by the instructor, or whether you are engaging in a writing project for your own purposes, the establishment of a deadline is a crucial component that makes the difference between an actual writing project and a pipe dream. You may wind up altering the schedule as you become increasingly involved in the project, but blocking off units of time to devote to writing and identifying an endpoint helps writers to visualize the end product and to pace their efforts appropriately. The strategies discussed in this lecture finding a personal connection, engaging in an active research process, brainstorming and free writing, nurturing the unconscious, and establishing a timeline will help you generate ideas for a writing project, but it is important to note that these are not really separate strategies, but interconnected and recursively entangled elements of a more all-encompassing intellectual undertaking. Brainstorming and free writing can help you to find and refine the personal connection. Establishing a timeline can help to focus your research strategy, Further research will give you more material to incorporate into your brainstorming diagrams and your free writing exercises. All of these stages are interpenetrated with the influence of the subconscious, and they are all informed by the established parameters of the writing project itself. You may have other strategies that you use to help process information and generate new ideas. Anything that stimulates thought and reflection can help to lay the intellectual foundation for the writing project that you will go on to produce. If this foundation is grounded in reflections that are personally felt, well understood, and thoughtfully considered, the rest of the pro writing project will rise naturally out of this bedrock.